Warning, this podcast contains descriptions of murder, torture and abuse. As a result, it may not be suitable for everybody. Beaufort, France is located some 50 kilometres northeast of Grenoble and 8 kilometres east of Beaupierre. Across the commune is the D73 road which changes to the D59D, then the D59 from Lapez Rue Monray in the east which passes through the common north of the village. It's a commune in the Idere department in Avignon Ra Alpine region of southeastern France. Listen to the hometown murder case of Joseph Veitcher, a French serial killer, sometimes known as the French Ripper or the South East Ripper, owing to the comparisons to the more famous Jack the Ripper murderer of London, England in 1888. His scarred face and plain white handmade rabbit fur hat composed his trademark appearance. He killed 11 people, many of whom were adolescent farm workers between 1894 and 1897. Joseph Fascher was born on November 16, 1869 and died in December 31st, 1898. He was known as the French serial killer, the French Ripper and the South East Ripper, owing to comparisons to the more famous Jack the Ripper. He was the son of an illegitimate farmer. Young Joseph was sent to a very strict Catholic school where he was taught to obey and to fear God seek an escape from the intense poverty of his childhood as the 15th child of a peasant family he joined the army in 1892. Frustrated by slow promotion and no recognition and infused with a grandioso belief that he was not receiving the attention he deserved, Fascia attempted to kill himself by slicing his throat. This was the first of two unsuccessful suicide attempts. While Vaisha had been in the army, he fell in love with a young maidservant, Louise, who was not attracted to him and spurned his advances. After his attempted suicide led to his dismissal from the military, he again tried to court her, even going so far to propose marriage. Bored by him and uninterested in his offer, she mocked him and his proposal. This second slight also motivated violence. In a rage, Fascia shot Louise four times and then tried to commit suicide. Both attempts were unsuccessful. Louise was badly injured but survived the shooting and Fascia severely maimed himself. Shooting himself twice in the head, he succeeded in paralysing one f- side of his face, deforming him severely. One of the bullets remained lodged in his ear for the remainder of his life and the damage to his brain likely exuberated his existing mental illness. He felt that the shooting damaged him more than physically. He later claimed after his arrest that the reactions to strangers so his self-inflicted deformity drove him to hatred of his society at large. This second suicide attempt put him in mental institutes in Dole, Jura. Despite a one-year stay and a pronouncement from the doctor he was completely cured, Fascia began murdering his victim shortly after his release at the age of 25. During a three-year period, beginning in 1894, Fascia murdered and mutilated at least 11 people, one woman, five teenage girls and five teenage boys. Many of them were shepherds watching their flocks in isolated fields. The victims were stabbed repeatedly, often disemboweled, raped and sodomised. Vacher became a drifter, travelling from town to town from Normandy to Provence, staying mainly in the south-east France and surviving by begging or working on farms as a day labourer. By most accounts, he was unkept and frighteningly 
wandering from town to town as a vagrant in filthy clothes, begging in streets and surviving on scraps he received from anyone who spared him kindness. In 1897, Fauci tried to assault a woman gathering wood in a field in Ardèche. She fought back and her scream soon alerted her husband and son, both of whom came rushing to her aid. The men overpowered Vaisha and took him to the police. Despite their belief that they apprehended the man responsible, the authorities had little evidence that Vaisha was responsible for the first series of murders. However, with little apparent prompting, Vaisha confessed to committing all 11 murders, saying, quote, I committed them all in moments of frenzy, end quote. After his arrest, Vaisha claimed he was insane and attempted to prove it in a variety of ways. He claimed that a rabid dog bit him, which had poisoned his blood, causing him madness, but blamed, later blamed the quack cure he received for the bite. He also claimed he sent by God comparing himself to Joan of Arc. Despite his protestations, he was pronounced sane after lengthy investigations by a team of doctors that included the eminent professor Alexandra Lacassini. He tried and convicted by cure de assizes of R, the county where he committed two of his murders of his victims and was sentenced to death on October 28, 1898. Vaisha was executed by guillotine at dawn two months later on December 31st, 1898. He refused to walk to the scaffold under his own power and was dragged to the guillotine by executioners. Vaisha's place in French social history is similar to Jack the Ripper's place in British social history. In 1976, French filmmaker Bertard Tavernier made a film, Le Jean l'Assassin, The Judge and the Murderer, that was inspired by Vaisha's story. The name of the murderer, played by Michel Galabru, is slightly changed into Joseph Bouvier. In French, the words Bouvier and Vaisha describe the same profession, herdsman. In 1949, the novel The Shelter in Sky by Paul Bowles, in private dialogue with her husband Paul, the character Kit Moresby says of Eric Lyle, his character, he looks like a young Vacher. Towards the end of 1894, a girl named Louise Marcel, aged 13, a shepherdess living at Verrere in the department of Var, was found dead in a wood. Her throat was found to be cut, her breasts literally gorged out and her body mutilated in the same fashion adopted by the Whitechapel Jack the Ripper with his victims. This was in November 1894 and all efforts to trace the murderer was no avail when on May 12, 1895 a somewhat similar crime was perpetrated at Etelaire's near Dijon. In this case a 17 year old age Augustine Mertere was murdered on a public highway, but was not mutilated to such an extent as to render her impossible to ascertain that a criminal outage had been attempted. On August the 24th of the same year, a widow aged 65 named Murat was foully murdered in the early morning at her isolated cottage in the Provence of Savoy. Her throat was cut from ear to ear and the victim was violated. One year later, day for day, a 16-year-old lad named Portalalia, employed as a shepherd, was murdered in an open field at Benances in daylight. With a mostly ghastly nonchalance, the assassin set to carve at the body as though he was cutting a sheep and left the horrible remnants drawn out. This crime, by the way, was enacted in the department of Anne, and it is a singular thing that although the murders followed each other with such startling rapidity, no two were committed in the same province. Four weeks afterwards, Pierre Massat Palette, also a shepherd aged 14, was murdered in the mountainous county near saint etienne de Belon in the department of Ardèche. He was frightfully murdered after death. The next victim was a young girl named Lorette, aged 19. She was newly married and was violated and killed in a field while, while occupied in tending some cattle. This occurred in the Palm of Alia a year and a fortnight after the murder of the young Pellet. A little 
12-year-old girl named Rosina Rodier was watching the flocks three weeks later in a field within a hundred yards of the village of Varan Saint Honorat in Lot Lare, where she was assassinated without anybody in the neighbourhood noticing her the aggression. Her throat was cut and the vertebrae column in her trunk was mutilated in as many as the previous cases. Then the murderer took another long rest and the next day and the eighth crime was not committed until the June 19th of the present year when a youngster named Lorette, age 14, was also murdered. A man named Joseph Varcher, born in Beaufort in the Department of Israel, was then charged, as previously stated. Thank you for everybody who's listened to this episode. This episode has been researched, written and hosted by me, Andrew Knight. Sound, music and editing has been provided by Harry Edmondson. Make sure you subscribe to the show anywhere where you listen to your podcast. This allows the episode to be downloaded automatically as soon as it's released. Please reach out to us on the social media. We're at Hometown Murders on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. Please support the show by leaving a five-star rating or a review. It really does help. 